Hey everybody, welcome back to Fix the Rust Bucket. Behind me here is our 2000 Chevy that we've been working on. We're gonna get into the video of rebuilding the rack and pinion. The parts are in, we gotta dismantle it, get everything torn apart, cleaned up, repainted, and then we can reassemble that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the rack, the outside rack boots to get access to our, our inner tie rods. To remove them, you have one clamp up here and then another clamp on the end. This little clamp on the end is real easy to remove. To squeeze clamp, you can slide it off. Let me get the jam nut off the end of this. All right, so with the jam nut removed, you can take this clamp right here, just squeeze it, pull it out, and off it goes. Same thing on the other side. Pull it off and it's out of the way. These here, you can just cut off, snap them out, and they'll come off. That out of the way. And with that one out of the way, we can go ahead and start to remove the boots. Now this line right here is just an air transfer tube to equalize the air as you're turning the wheel left and right. Equalizes the air in the boots. Saving that part, that's gonna go back on after it gets cleaned up and repainted. So, start sliding. Your boots, which are going to be tough because this is all covered up, covered up in uh, dirt and grime. But the boots will slide off in the outward position. I've actually cleaned the rack once just to get the heavy crud off of it to not get so much crud on my tools. Um, it's still pretty cruddy. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and just try and get this boot popped off the end here. A lot of crud and junk. Not only was this leaking, this, you can see this was soaking wet and leaking. Also the oil pan on the truck is leaking. So we're gonna be replacing oil pan later on. It's just completely filthy dirty. And with that boot popped off, you can see the seals are gone underneath. We'll take the air tube the air transfer tube, which is going to take and set that off to the side because we are going to use that again. I'm going to try and get this off of the outer link. If it doesn't want to come off, we'll expose it and go a different route. See what happens. That's popped off. Slide that out of the way. And put this off to the side since it's still leaking quite a bit of fluid. With that one removed, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side and then get this mess cleaned up and continue on with dismantling it. Same thing, they get stuck sometimes, or they're a little bit stu stuck on there. This one's not too bad. Go ahead and get some more rags over here. Pop that one off. Again, we'll take this boot over, let it sit and drain. 
Now with those two removed, it's exposed the inside where the outer boot, or excuse me, the inside where the inner rod meets. So let's get the tools for that and get this disassembled now as well. You shouldn't have, there should be no fluid inside where the boot sits on here. That boot is only to keep dirt and grease and debris from getting up inside your joint here on the inner tie rods. So we had fluid on both sides, more on this side than that side. The seals are gone, but we're going to go ahead and continue now with tearing everything down. To get the inner tie rods out, we have to remove both of these sleeves to slide them back over. And with them slid back over, we can access to remove the inner rods. So they are not sliding off. Oh. Now they don't want to slide off, so we're going to go ahead and tap them off. With that sleeve removed, both sides, you can get access right here now to the inner rod. With those removed, now we've dismantled our we've taken it apart from the vehicle so it's not mounted to the frame which is going to make it a little more difficult to spin these so i'm going to try this with a extension to hold the rack in position keep it from spinning so much <clears throat> that way when i twist Hopefully it'll hold this rack up. That's one side. Leave that there for now. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. And remove this one. That one wasn't too bad. All right, with those two removed, we'll move on to taking the lines off. I'm gonna get a drain pan and drain out the rest of the fluid inside here. We're going to go ahead and now remove the two transfer lines. These move the power steering fluid that comes in here. They move them through the piston inside here, depending if you're turning left or right, it equalizes and pushes that fluid in the right direction. Go ahead and remove these. Got the drain pan here because I am sure they're going to leak if all the fluid didn't leak out into the boots. That 
machen ist. Der und so. Do this the smart way. That's out on that side. I finished loosening these up. them off and let that drain out all right so with the hoses removed we're going to go ahead and remove the lock nut the rack screw the inner parts inside which will be the spring and rack guide and all that get that out of the way and then continue working on pulling the rest of this apart with the dust boot Bring inside. With those out of our way. Go ahead and start up here. Pull off the dust cover. All right, with the right points on my tool, I'll go ahead and try this again and get this removed, the C-clip removed from here. that out of the way. All right, had to take a minute here, replace the batteries on my camera, and I cleaned up the mess. I get that out of the way. We left off with removing the C-clip here. We have the rack guide to knock out, and then we're going to work underneath of here to continue removing the pinion. So to get the rack guide out, see right here inside here we took this cap off this guide right here as you'll see when I pull it out it's got a curve in it hold the rack and that comes off which is fine try and there it goes Oh. 
Here's the curve I was talking about in the rack guide. The rack guide slides along this, keeping the gears in the right position. So I go up there. This cap fell off. You can see inside with this, the grease and power steering fluid mixed up. It's disgusting. With that out of the way, that cap, to take off the cap, if it was still on there, I'll show you here, it's just flathead screwdriver. You can tap your hammer. This over here for you. And the cap, just in between the housing and the cap, you take your screwdriver and lightly tap a screwdriver down behind it. And once you do that, you twist and twist the cap off. It fell off just fine. With that removed, we're going to remove the next C clip on the back side here and the nut holding the pinion in. Squeeze that, get that to pop loose. It popped up on the one side, so take that was easy enough. Took my pick and knocked it out. Going to take off the nut here. Backs up the bearing on the pinion. Pull this cap off that one doesn't matter i was i was turning the nut it's tight so it's turning the rack inside so we'll just push the rack all the way to one side now we can go ahead and remove the nut nut comes off Backside, get that cap. Everything is so sticky from the grease and everything. That cap's off. We're gonna go ahead and just pull this cap off too so we don't damage that. Now with that out of the way, I'm gonna push the rack back a little bit. I'm gonna take my dead blow hammer and try and knock the pinion out of the housing here. It does stick sometimes, but as the pinion, you know, see as your pinion turns here, your rack is turning too. The gears are kind of, the, the gears are in a curved motion. So you gotta kind of knock it off and I'm gonna pull on this, just to pull on the rack just a little bit as I knock that out, hoping to get it to fall out. that out here's the curved gears this stuff is so slick and slimy there's the curved gears as I was saying so I was spinning it as I was pulling the rack and spinning this and hitting the back side of this to pull the pinion out set that off to the side as well that out of the way I'm not gonna be able you're not gonna be able to see it in the camera right now but Deep down inside here, right where this part of the housing and that part of the housing indentation are, there's a seal down inside there that will have to get pulled out. That was leaking, allowing the fluid inside here where it should just be the grease. And I'm not gonna be able to show you either, but on this side here, you'll see when I pull this out, there's a piston in, well, it's not a piston, but another part in a seal on the rack, keeping the fluid in between the end here and the end here. There's another seal down here, which was also, I guess, probably leaking, letting fluid in there. 
But with the pinion out, we can go ahead and start working on, I'll get that bearing out later as well. We're going to start working on getting the rack out of the whole housing itself. So, again, push the rack all over to one side and try and show you guys this on camera here. Inside here, there's a metal ring holding down the sealed part and the metal, I'm not sure what the metal part's called, but the sealed part right here. I guess it would be the, the, the rack bushing and it's got a seal around it to seal it off the fluid. So on the side here, you'll see it. There's a little hole and this ring inside here where the opening is, you gotta spin it. It's the easiest way to get it out is to spin it around to that hole and you'll be able to use your pick, push up in the hole, pushing up that metal clip. So let me get my picks over here. Find out where that's at. So the broken the broken open end of the or the open end of the thing is the clip is right there and the holes over here. So I'm gonna push try and push that around to that opening. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Slides fairly easy. So, actually went a little too far. So the end of the ring inside here is right there. The hole is right here. That hole right there, and then just the bottom of the hole, push that in and lift up and that will lift up that metal ring you can see now underneath uh, or the pick is underneath of that metal ring and then we'll get the other pick out just pick that up and lift it up and out out now with that removed we should be able to pull the rest of the rack I believe where I'm at yeah with that out we pull the rack out there we go pull the rack out of the housing Here's the seal I was, the seal and the bearing I was talking about. The bearing that slides inside with the rack going back and forth. This is the piston, if you want to call it, the fluids on either side and the seal. And that was these two lines coming off feeding, feed the fluid into this side or this side. And depending on which way you're turning, pushes the rack inside, thus giving you the rack and pinion steering. This seal right here wasn't leaking too bad. This boot wasn't too wet over here, but we're st everything's still getting replaced. Now, that's it for disassembling this. This is com completely taken apart, except for, you know, due to two bushings still, but Everything is taken apart except for the bearing here, which I'm going to knock out in a minute. The seal I was telling you about buried down in here, keeping the fluid above and where the lines are only, not allowing the fluid down into the, this area. This seal, I'm not going to be able to show you, there's just no way to see it down in there. That's 14 inches down in there, I guess, or so. But we'll have to reach down inside there, pull that seal out, and replace that seal with a new one as well. But before we do that, 
take a look at the rack. I wanted to see if any teeth had been damaged, and I also wanted to look at the pinion. Just wanted to be in that it was a side impact and the wheel took a hard hit. Just wanted to look and see if any of these teeth along here had been broken or chipped. And honestly, it looks like there might be a slight gouge mark or slight little indentation on one or two teeth right there. But they are not broken. Let's take a look at the piston or the gears on the other end of the pinion here. And they don't seem to be damaged either. So. Oh, they seem to be pretty good as well. So the inside of the uh, rack and pinion did not take a hard hit to where it got damaged. And goodness, the inner tie rod on the passenger side which was on this side. Thank goodness that gave before too much pressure came in, breaking all of this stuff. So set that off to the side. The only thing left to do will be now to do the bushings and the seals, which I'm not gonna be able to film because you're not gonna be able to see them. Get the bushings pushed out. And then we're gonna take this and get this cleaned up. Yep, push pushing kit out. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up, push it on this side, and eject it out of this side. And do both of them. show you in a minute here I didn't show you I should have just showed you this bushing kit so this cup resting up against the C here is opened enough on the inside to allow the bushing to be pushed push the bushing out from this side here and the bushing will fall down or come down into this cup here and then we'll be able to take that back apart and get the bushing out righty tighty these shouldn't be in too hard because this was covered with so much fluid they're probably gonna, yeah they're slipping right out it looks like Back that off. Out of the way. So this is just a cup to house the. It's just a cup with different tiers on it to house. There's the ring I was telling you about the cup, and the bushing fits inside. There's a couple different kinds that you have depending on your bushing size. Back the screw out. Give yourself the room to get the cup and in there. Tighten it up a little bit. Lift, lift up and get the bearing in the center of the cup. Thank you. 
hand tight and knock it out with the wrench again. Came all the way out perfect. Then off to the side, unscrew this. All right, so with everything out, your rack out, pinion out. All this is laid out. Um, some of this we're going to reuse. Some of this we're going to be replacing with new stuff. These caps we can reuse. They're not damaged. I don't need to get new ones. They're just covers. Clean this up. We'll have a few things to clean up. This is the main part. I'm going to go get this one cleaned up, repaint it, and then we'll start sticking more the new seals back in and reassembling everything.